just in time for the Johnny Blue Show. What's going on, everybody? This is John Brookhagen, host of the Johnny Blue Show, and welcome to Season 2, Episode 1, Part 3. This part of the Johnny Brew Show is brought to you by Infinity, the Math Institute. Don't get more math problems, get solutions. Infinity, the Math Institute is about to start their summer classes, which is the best product they have to offer. Every child who tries a little bit and attends summer classes always has the best math year of their life. Now, with the problems with COVID and everything, if your child needs a review of last year's material, that's what we're going to give them. If they did okay, instead we're going to preview everything they're going to see for the following school year. So when they learn it in school, it's simply just a review. And they get to kick butt and be confident the whole school year. TheMathInstitute.com, 702-768-1777. That's TheMathInstitute.com, 702-768-1777. Don't get more math problems, get solutions. All right, speaking of education, you guys know that that's where my passion lies. If uh, I had to find a singular topic to discuss here on the Johnny Bruce Show, it would be focused around education. And um, I wanna give a shout out to Anna Binder. She's um, taking care of some family matters. She's got somebody sick in the family and we pray and wish them nothing but the best. And uh, she's going to be back, I think, next week, if not the following week, to update us on everything that's been going on. And there's been a lot going on. But what I really want to do is I want to give a shout out to Long Island. Yes, that's where I'm from. That's where I spent most of my life. I've been in Vegas 17 years. So let's do some math. For eight years, I lived in New York City, New York. Then from the ages of eight to 30, 22 years, I lived on Long Island, take out a year and put that in Florida. So I lived two years in Florida, 17 years in Vegas, 21 years in Long Island and eight years in New York City. So as of right now, I'm more Long Island than anything else, but Vegas is catching up right quick. My boys in Long Island, they started a little group. It's called the Long Island Loud Majority. All right, L-I-L-M. You'll see that hashtag on some of my posts in Common Sense Nevada. Those guys are making a difference. All right, they are. Do you remember? And I'm not gonna, you know, I try not to play the clips that you all heard a million times, but I'm guessing you heard the clip of that congresswoman saying that she visited a dear friend on Long Island and she saw all those pickup trucks with American flags and expletive Biden, and she was so scared for our country, and she made it clear that this is just the beginning of their cultural revolution. She had to snuff out people like this. She's talking about the Long Island loud majority. And besides driving around in pickup trucks with American flags, you know what else they do? They're going to all the school board meetings. They are running their own candidates in these school board meetings. They are speaking at all the school board meetings because that is the front lines of this war right now. They're trying to indoctrinate our children from the word go. So when they're talking about two-year-old, three-year-old, four-year-old, five-year-old state-sponsored government-funded health uh, child care, that's baloney. They're trying to get your kid in front of one of their liberal indoctrination people. All right? And they don't have to train them. The teachers, they gravitate towards it. The people who are liberal like to become teachers. And that's why 91% of teachers identify as Democrat. 95% of school board members identify as Democrat. Not so long. Not if the Long Island loud majority has something to do with it. All right? And I got nothing to do with the Long Island loud majority. I just call out and... Give respect to those who deserve it. Speaking of which, this uh, episode or this portion of this episode is going to be dedicated 
to the people who didn't, I shouldn't say didn't care, the people who didn't get involved because they trusted our system, they trusted our teachers, they trusted our school, and they trusted our government. And they're realizing we've been trusting for far too long. So, here's a collection of messages that should be heard loud and clear by every single school board member, every single teacher, every single administrator, and especially you pieces of filth in the teachers' unions. This is a perfect explanation to get us started. This is a Colorado mom explaining to the school board what they probably know but pretend they don't and a message to all the parents and teachers. Everybody saying, what is CRT? This Colorado mother explains it perfectly. Roll tape. County School District child, and I'm also the president of Parents United America, which represents hundreds of parents who are outraged and very concerned by these shifts that are happening in our public school system. We've heard a lot about how the education, the Equity educational policy is not equivalent to critical race theory. However, I've heard many things that are very disturbing that show it to be quite the opposite. First of all, the term equity, it sounds great, but is exactly opposite of equal opportunity. Equity demands an equal outcome. That only happens when you gerrymander things to favor one group or another. It's not the same as equal opportunity. The second thing that it concerns me is when I heard the definition of equity that has been shared here and through many communications from the district. It talks about groups of individuals. When you talk about groups, it is collectivism. It is separating children into groups. That is exactly what it is doing. And groups based on what? What we've heard from both hiring the Gemini group, which is also another thing that concerns me, is the groups are broken down into race, gender identity, sexual preference, and oppression. When we look at the Gemini group teaching, which I took time to watch the entire thing, it is even more disturbing. And this group was hired by this board because in that training, it talks about oppressors and oppressed. That is damaging to every group of children. First of all, some groups of children are thought of as being shamed for who they are. The others are taught that they are victims without the ability to further themselves and to look at the others as the enemies. We all know the, the Dr. King quote that has been shared, color of our skin versus the content of our character. He had a dream. This is a nightmare. It is a nightmare for our children and it needs to end now. The training also, by the way, divides basically educators and parents because in... I mean, guys, she hits the nail right on the head, all right? She's warning you. If you hear about, oh, it's not CRT, but they constantly use the word equity, then it's CRT. It is. Equity is a term coined directly from... Critical race theory, which was once critical class theory or something like that, or critical theory in general or something like that. Equity is equality of outcome. You cannot have equality of outcome. All right? I'm here working my ass off. All right? You do not deserve to have a podcast the way I deserve to have a podcast. Because for four or five months, I've been working my tail off trying to bring you a great product. You are not entitled to this desk, these lights or cameras, or these windows overlooking the strip. I work for that. You're not entitled to anything that you don't work for. If you want something, you have to work for it. No, if you're a high school student, that plays video games 12 hours a day, God bless you. This is America. You can do whatever you want. Or if you're a young man practicing basketball 12 hours a day, or you're a young woman studying for 12 hours a day, you do not deserve equal outcomes. The young lady deserves good grades. The young man deserves a spot on the basketball team. And the other kid deserves a chance to play his video game on Twitch. I don't know. Or whatever you can earn doing video games. They don't deserve the equal outcome. Bottom line. So equity is baloney. 
Every time I say baloney, I'm about to say something else. But I don't. This next video is a little bit difficult to understand and the sound quality is not great. But the message is the most important one I'm going to play. All right? Do your best to pay attention and listen closely. If I had 34 hours in a day, I would uh, close caption it for you. But I don't. So you're going to have to just pay attention. Listen very carefully to what this woman says. And this woman is off the boat. When I say off the boat, I mean they were born in a different country. This woman was born in China. She's an off the boat immigrant with children in our school system. And this is the message she had for the school board in her neighborhood. Play tape. Very alarmed about what's going on in our school. You are now teaching, training our children to be social justice warriors and to loathe our country and our history. Uh, growing up in Mao's China, all this seemed very familiar. The uh, communist regime used the same critical theory to divide people. The only difference is they use class instead of race. During the Cultural Revolution, I witnessed students and teachers again turn against each other. We changed school names to be politically correct. Um, we were taught to denounce our heritage. The Red Guards destroy anything that is not communist. Old uh, statues, books, and anything else. <clears throat> we are also encouraged to report on each other, just like the uh, Student Equity Ambassador Program and the Bias Reporting System. This is indeed the American version of the Chinese Communist the Chinese Cultural Revolution. The critical race theory has its roots in cultural Marxism. It should have no place in our school. Very good. Thank you. Thank you for being brave and standing up there and telling us about your experience. All right, this woman was there for the Cultural Revolution in China, which resulted in them going full communist, which now has detention centers and concentration camps for Muslims. And you will get shot or hosed down if you try to get on a train during coronavirus time. All right? They are an evil empire. The government, not the people, just like Iran. A lot of good people in Iran who have Western values and love human, humanitarians. But the Iranian government is evil as is the Chinese government. Now, when Mao Zedong started the Cultural Revolution, he had his little red book. And again, like the woman said, this is critical theory. They usually use it with class because when they did it in Russia, they weren't able to separate people by race because they were all white Russian people. They can't classify people by race in China because it's a bunch of Chinese people. But the tinder is dry and ready to explode here in America. You don't even have to do it about class. You just have to do it by race. Because we are the least racist, most diverse, wonderful, melting pot, salad bowl country that has ever existed. Excuse me. We all look different. It's easy to divide us by the color of our skin. So they do. It's even easier and clearer cut than the caste system or the, or the class system that they had to fight for. They're, we're handing it to them on a silver platter. And this woman is telling us the same thing from the lists that they're keeping of people who aren't woke to the indoctrination of our children to the turning people against each other in neighborhoods and families is the same thing that turned China into the communist regime it is now. And they're trying to do it now and here. And you people who claim to love this country are going right along with it. And you're either, you're either ignorant or you're brainwashed or you're happy that communists are winning. I don't know what it is. All right. But this is something else that's happening. All too often. You want to talk about division in our neighborhoods? Division among our neighbors? 
conflict at school board meetings? Here we go. This is a parent who just finishes up what they had to say and they closed the meeting to comments. And let's see what transpires after that. County public school teacher, and I'm gonna give a message of encouragement to parents and teachers and students who are too afraid to come and speak forward. Parents, the longer that you wait and you don't hold your child's schools accountable gives these guys more time to dictate what's best for your child's physical, mental, and emotional health. Don't be afraid to speak out for your kids because they are voiceless and they... D I'm sorry. I rolled the wrong tape. I, I, I would describe the next tape coming up. This tape is actually... This is a mother and a teacher trying to give advice to students and other parents and so on and so forth. Can we start the tape over and play it again from the beginning so people know what they're paying attention to? This is giving you advice as a teacher, as a parent, and as anybody who has a student proposing these theories. This is her very good advice. Roll tape. Fairfax County public school teacher, and I'm gonna give a message of encouragement to parents and teachers and students who are too afraid to come and speak forward. Parents, the longer that you wait and you don't hold your child's schools accountable gives these guys more time to dictate what's best for your child's physical, mental, and emotional health. Don't be afraid to speak out for your kids because they are voiceless and they, and they rely on you. You should be afraid of them rooting for socialism by the time they get to middle school. Teachers, it may seem that our careers have come to a dead end, but I'm here to remind you, we don't work for the school board. We work to mold the next generation of well-rounded American patriots. So don't give up because it is up to us. Students, you are on the front lines of these indoctrination camps. Challenge the staff when you're presented with a ludicrous statement and do not allow anybody to tell you that you cannot accomplish anything because of your skin color or to hate yourself because of your skin color. Students, it is up to you to be the next generation of victims or victors. And finally, to the board, this isn't over and your policies are just as... That is making us Nick Gofford, followed by Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> I like how they turn off her mic, right? She, and that, they, she gave advice to the students. She gave advice to the parents. And then she's going to give advice to the school board. And her mic shuts off. Very convenient. You see the way they run these school board meetings. I've been watching these all the time. They're always turning off mics and being jerks. But again, let me reiterate. Students, her advice to you is when you hear some blasphemy, you have to say so. All right, I'm teaching the summer camp. The, I don't tell the kids I'm teaching them anti-CRT curriculum. I teach the kids about the great things in our country. And then, with that education, if their teacher tries to pull some baloney, they're going to have the facts to refute. And if they get held to account for disagreeing with the teacher when the teacher's being blasphemous... I hope that that's brought to all of our attention. The uh, advice she had for parents, don't give up. We've given them way too much rope and we've trusted them for far too long. It is time to activate. It is time to go to a school board meeting, to write an email, to write a letter, to educate your child, to support people who support patriotic messages. I'm not trying to put lipstick on a pig. We got plenty of things that maybe we're not proud of, but we can learn from. And if we don't cherish our history, the good and the bad, we're not going to be able to learn from our mistakes. And just like the Chinese woman said, don't let these progressives rewrite history. Because if we don't have our history anymore, the good and the bad, we're not going to be able to improve on it. We're not going to be avoid, able to avoid the mistakes. Do not let them tear down a statue that at one time was of a person we called a hero. Do not let them tell you this country was built on white supremacy when George Washington was ensuring that any new territories were slave free. That New Hampshire was in 1776 one of the first states and they outlawed slavery from the get go. They couldn't do it in the whole country. We wouldn't be a country if we put our foot down and abolished slavery as a federal rule law in 1776. But we set up the process to get it done. All right? And we're not perfect. But we are the best civilization this world has ever known. 
And that's what kids really need to take away from this. All right. Again, sometimes this is happening. I already gave you the background, so we'll just play the tape and I'll tell you what happened afterwards. But you can see for yourself, it's quite exciting. Especially Current path they're headed down. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. Grani. That concludes the special, um, the visitor speaking time. So I'll turn it over to yes, Superintendent's sir. report. Be respectful. You're elected representative to represent us. This isn't about you, Mark. You're not going to stand up here and do anything to me, asshole. Hey, stop. All right, you get the point. If they went to blows, we'd let the tape play out, but thankfully they didn't. But, I mean, first of all, the guy said something and the whole crowd cheered. So it's not like this guy is all by himself and feeling this way. Number two, the school board member had a snide remark, and the guy says, you work for me, please be respectful. The school board member then says, and I'm quoting, I'm not going to do anything for you, asshole. Now, even if the parent had used the expletive first, the school board member still needs to have the decorum of a professional and not say it back. But being that the guy didn't even use an expletive, the school board member should lose his job immediately. You don't call a parent an asshole, even if... Even if it's warranted, which it wasn't. And then the parent jumped right up on the stage and got in the guy's face, which I can't blame him. But then you're talking about, you know, a possible assault and charges and getting the police involved. And, you know, I support the police, but I don't want to call them. I don't want the police around. I, don't, I want to live in a civil society. All right? So, you know, just because I support the police doesn't mean I like seeing police in my rearview mirror. We don't need to get the police involved and get into fist fights over this stuff. Have some respect. And this is going to happen more and more because people are passionate about this. Look around me. Spent thousands of dollars to make no money because I want to deliver this message because I'm passionate about it. You don't think some father of two is willing to go to jail before having their kids get brainwashed? God love you. You should. If I could choose my son being brainwashed or me going to jail, I'd go to jail every time. Every freaking time. But this just brings you to what's going on in this country. From them using the same tactics that Mao did in the Cultural Revolution in China, that's what Black Lives Matter is trying to do here. And again, Black Lives Matter, the slogan is great. Black Lives Do Matter. I love black people. I love purple, pink, and yellow people too. But Black Lives Matter is not an organization to further the lives and opportunities of black people. And people are finding out. And it's snowballing. Black Lives Matter is a communist political organization. That's not hyperbole. That's not exaggeration. That is their admitted goal, aim, Full stop. Their tenants, well, you know what? This gentleman, he founded a BLM chapter. He is an educational um, activist. He wants to get young black children education and opportunity. He is a noble man. He joined Black Lives Matter believing they were a noble organization. But after a couple of years of working with the organization, he realized that wasn't the case. So let this man, who's been on the inside for years, explain to you why he left Black Lives Matter. Play tape. I was born in Minneapolis in 1985. We called the North Side home at that time, 18th and Queen. When I was two years old, my father was shot and killed. My mother wasn't able to take care of me, so I was raised by my grandparents. They told me, 
that if I was going to change my life for the better, education was the answer. So I worked hard in school. I got into Hamlin University and earned a college degree, first in my family. Then I went on to earn a master's in education from St. Mary's University of Minnesota. I am living proof that no matter your start in life, quality education is a pathway to success. I want the same success for our children in our communities. That's why in 2015, I was the founder of Black Lives Matter in St. Paul. I believe the organization stood for exactly what the name implies. Black lives do matter. However, after a year on the inside, I learned they had little concern for rebuilding black families, and they cared even less about improving the quality of education for students in Minneapolis. That was made clear when they publicly denounced charter schools alongside the teachers' union. I was an insider in Black Lives Matter, and I learned the ugly truth. The moratorium on charter schools does not support rebuilding the black family, but it does create barriers to a better education for black children. I resigned from Black Lives Matter after a year and a half, but I didn't quit working to improve black lives and access to a great education. Today, I serve as the president and executive director of Minnesota Parent Union. We're dedicated to helping parents move their children from failing schools to successful schools. It's hard work and we're up against forces that don't want us to succeed, but success is possible. Just look at me and the hundreds of children and families we've helped to pursue a great education, break the chains of poverty, and lead a life of success. All right, guys, how does that not move you? That's a man who's trying to make a difference. And just like half of this country, or more than half even, that supported Black Lives Matter, I don't fault you. Black lives do matter. And we do need <clears throat> a concerted effort in the black community to afford more opportunity, to afford a better education. One of the avenues to offer that better education is through school choice. So that way your zip code does not determine your education. If you live in some crap ass town, well, if your parents are motivated, they could take you to the school two towns over that might afford you a better education, that might surround you with other students who are embracing their education. They're even offering buses and stuff like that, so even if the school isn't right close to your house, you can still find a way to go there. All right? I don't understand. How is secure elections racist, but opposing school choice isn't? School choice will help way more children of color than white kids, all right? You guys know this. I'm not saying there aren't certain residual effects of our past racism, which includes kids in the inner cities being stuck in a situation that's really hard to get out of. How, does that, how do we accelerate the diversification of our suburbs? How do we embrace and accelerate the diversification in our good schools? It's called school choice, all right? So don't come at me with that hyperbolic baloney about black people can't get a voter ID and black people need to go to the school that's in their zip code, all right? If you're gonna make this about race, let's call a spade a spade. If you oppose school choice, you oppose black education. That's the bottom line. All right, that's not hyperbole. That's not election baloney. That's the truth. Because school choice can give kids equal opportunity, which is what is promised by America. Equality of justice and equality of opportunity. That's all we ask for. And let me tell you right now, don't let some chunky white liberal with a vagina on their head tell you about what's right and what's wrong for the black community. All right? If you want to listen to somebody about what's best for our children, whatever color they are, and our community, whatever color they are, listen to this gentleman and his brilliant, beautiful daughter. Roll tape. Daddy teaches you you can be anything in this world 
that you want to be, right? Don't daddy teach you that? Yeah, and it doesn't matter if, if you're black or white or any color. Doesn't matter if you're black, white, brown, yellow. yellow. Right? Black. And and how we treat people is based on who yeah. they are and not and what color nice. they are. And if they're nice and smart. See? This is how this is how children think right here. Critical race theory wants to end that. Not with my children. It's not gonna happen. My baby's gonna know that no matter what she wants to be in life, all she has to do is work hard and she can become that. Work hard even though you don't know anyone, you can make friends. <laughs> Yeah, you can make friends, no matter what color they are. So we need to stop CRT, period, point blank. Children do not see skin color, man. They love everybody. If they're good people, they love them. We pray for people that are hurt. Guys, she prays for people. I don't know if the camera can pick it up, but I'm literally <clears throat> fighting back tears. All right? All right, I'm going to tell you everything from the conservative point of view, all right? You know how I, 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 I'm sorry. That's, that's what, that's the kind of families we need in this country. That very well, I don't know who they are at all. That could be a single father with a daughter with one parent, or she could be a sibling of six kids with a mom and a dad and a grandma living in it. I don't even know. But... If that girl had a single parent father and that's the kind of lesson she's learning when she's four years old, five years old, that's what's gonna make our that's what's gonna make our country a better place. Tom McDonald said, let's stop worrying about leaving a better planet for our kids and start thinking about leaving better kids for our planet. And word up, bro. Whoever you are, whatever you're doing. Keep doing it. You're, you're, a, you're a great dad, and that girl's going to be all right. All right. I got to stop talking about him or I'm going to start crying. I love this country, and I love the people in it. And that's why I get so offended when people think I'm up to no good. They call me a liar or a racist. All right? I'm doing it for one reason and one reason only. I want every kid to look at this world the way that kid looks at it. I want every father to teach their kids the way that father's teaching their kids. All right? Critical race theory is a dangerous, dangerous weapon. And today's the day we need to snuff it out. We can't let this monster grow. We got to we gotta snuff it out, guys. All right? All right. Again, that was brought to you by Infinity, the Math Institute, 702-768-1777. Math classes starting in July. And of course, we're back up at Adam tutoring in August. School will start. No more COVID baloney. We're going to be uh, rocking and rolling. And we're going to be giving our kids the education they deserve. To think with data and evidence. And to think for themselves. We don't need to be told how to think or what to think. We need to be told how to think, not what to think. I, I messed it up. I'm still... Flustered from watching that little girl. My name is John Brookhagen, and we're going to come right back. Thank you so much.